Sorry for the delay. Uh, thank you for the invitation, and it's my pleasure to. C can you hear me well on the mic? Can you hear me? So, on on behalf of myself and our small organization called uh, Neverland Organization, I'm. Uh, I have the pleasure to present a language which we developed for past uh, few months. So actually, I. That's the, the name of the language, never. So I thought that I will never write the programming language. So after that, well, still I was thinking that it will never happen. But eventually I was advised by a nice person to start doing something. And then I, I thought that maybe I will start. And surprisingly, after I began in April, and we have February next year, so it's less than about 10 months passed, but I'm here to present the, the language. So uh, in this agenda, I will talk about the motivation, which will let me here. It's a, just a side project. And about the design, uh, the decisions, what's the under the hood. And I will uh, make a small demo that, it's, that the language is uh, um, actually capable of doing something uh, useful because many languages start with Fibonacci or doing some temperature calculations. I have this also in my language. <laughs> so as I said about the name of the language, so in this, in, this, oh, sorry, in this picture you can see that all the letters from A to Z were already taken. There are many names of ex-girlfriends, I think, like Lisa or Lily, so that was also I couldn't use. And uh, there are many names of famous scientists and some cute animals, so that I thought that well, ne never also will fit as well. So that's the name. So it's a hobby project, a creativity escape. I also am learning a little bit about uh, programming languages. It it's interests me a lot. I think that many people who uh, work in IT or computer science, they, they also are interested in this because they, this is their primary tool for doing things. And in the, in the background, you can see this is a tr translation to Polish of the Dragon Book, which I was reading. And th that was the kind of one of the first book, which gives you some very theoretical background. Then there are two books which led me to extend the, the language. There was a talk about types, so we have also a book about types. And there is a, a book which was very useful to, to start doing actually the, the design or the, the language, not from the using the, the Dragon Book, but rather to, to start writing a virtual machine. And this is a perfect code, there are some clean codes. So those are the things which you also should uh, look after, not to create some mess, but some maintainable code which can be extended. So the design de decisions, Th those are, f this is first, I began the language as a functional programming language. There is a chapter in a book how to, how to make a functional programming language. And I, then I decided it should be called by value. It should be statically typed because I want to have the compiler to correct m my code. And besides, such code is, is faster. I, I knew that many functional programming languages are ML-based. Maybe you know OCaml which is very hard to, to read. So I then thought, uh, when, uh, if everything is doing from scratch, then maybe I can have some C-like syntax. And then we have reference models, so everything is uh, reference, basically. We have box values, how the, how the values in uh, memory are represented, so every float or integer or string is kept in, inside the memory as, as a separate object. And it's syntactically scoped. So under the hood, what helped me a lot was actually not to come up with something completely new, but I read the book which I mentioned before. And then there I found the malware machine. I, I suppose it's, it is the basis for the Occam language in the, uh, its virtual machine. I also needed mark and sweep garbage collector because how the objects are created, how the uh, first class functions are re being returned from f different functions. So not to have so-called spaghetti stack, I needed the <coughs> garbage collector, which also kind of uh, simplifies things, I, as minimalism matters. 
and tailor its optimization. It, it, when we have a functional program, programming language, then we don't have loops. So, but using a tail, um, tail recursion, we can change um, loops into, into, into functions. Uh, then th there are some other things like uh, hash maps, trees, linked lists, and everything is written in C using our old friends Bison and Flex. So this is kind of the basis for many, many compilers when, when they are in the initial step. So that's, that's how, a, how a typical uh, code looks like in never language. So here we have static types. It means that the function calc, calc returns a, a function from within a, a fun, it returns a first uh, class function. This is its type that it takes a float parameter, returns the float, and it converts uh, Fahrenheit degrees into Celsius. So we get a function, and then we call it with some parameter, and then get a, a, a value. So that was the, the first pa part which was written. And oh, OK. So those, uh, mm, the language, how it was developed, I decided to first begin from invoking functions, because many uh, programming languages have loops or ifs, conditionals, or some other control uh, fun, uh, structures. But this seemed to be not very interesting to me because it's very w well written, and all the function invocations are written in a textbook at the end of it. So I decided to begin from the end because the, the beginning was not very interesting. And actually, I think that was a wise decision because uh, this way I had some kind of structure how the program will look in, in the later on, so some, some framework I could extend. So everything was expression, ev also functions are expressions. We have some simple operators, and we have only one type. And th that was the beginning, so, so to execute some uh, expressions. Then I thought, oh, maybe, maybe having these controls is not enough. So I added a type integer, so I could add a new operator. I could do some Boolean. Uh, expressions like and or not. And later on, I thought that, oh, maybe we should add some, something more. So we, let's go back to some controls. And I added some arithmetic functions and also assert function. And that was also, I think, a good decision, because this led me to write programs which were um, validating themselves. So when I, I would write something in the never programming language, do an assert, and then I knew that if this program works, then this asset will uh, pass, and that uh, I can create a, t a large test suite of many tests to validate if, if what I'm doing is, is proper and if I'm extending the, the language in a, in a proper way. Um, so then I got back to types, so matrices again, as to do something more. And those were uh, conformant arrays. Con conformant arrays mean that when you pass a um, a function, uh, an array to, to a function, then you will get its dimension in the, as an argument of a, of a, fu of a function. A such solution is in the Pascal programming language. Yeah, I also overloaded operators. Then, then I thought, oh, maybe let's go and add some more control flow. So, and so I added four while loops uh, and also variables. So this, uh, and this, and this point, um, it's also interesting, because I was trying to write uh, some dynamic programming language. Maybe you know the oh, sorry dynamic programming uh, some program uh, problem to solve, and it was um, uh, cutting rod. You may, maybe know that you should get a, a maximum value when cutting the rod, and there are some some values which should do um, we should which you should remember. But um, Mm, without side effects, it was very tedious to write such a program. So, so I thought, oh, let's do some assignments. It's, it's, it was to be a functional programming language, but maybe if, we, if someone doesn't want to use assignments, that he, will, he or she will have still functional programming language. But if we can change something that we can do more, more easily code some uh, interesting problems. Then I added types and, and exceptions. And, uh, and that's, that's it. So 
So that's that's how the the programming language was progressing. Could, could yes. you tell more about exceptions? Why you decided to implement this model of exceptions and not something else? Uh, well, I also was thinking how to handle with some uh, runtime errors. Ah, okay. The question was. Uh, why I decided to uh, add exceptions, not some optionals or some other form of error handling. So that's because when, if we had a division by, by zero, then the virtual machine would stop. But I didn't want to do that because I would like to have the programmer to have a chance to handle the situation in his or her way. So I thought that oh, maybe there is something like exceptions and I can learn how to do exception handling. I learned that exception handlers are being searched by binary search in the code, so that was really a surprising technique, which was which I also found somewhere. And uh, yeah, that's that's how I added this, that. Here you can on specify only the name of the exception. There are different exceptions like array out of bounds or some, some others. So I, how much time do I have? Five, five minutes and then questions. Okay, so, so here I have an example of a, of a neural network. So briefly, I wanted also to make some example of some more advanced program. So this is backward, forward uh, propagation of, of the supervised learning of a neural network. We have a perceptron, we have some input values and some output value. The, okay, and the, so yeah, and also it's, uh, some neural networks are recently a hot topic again. So uh, so basically, we set we want to set those values to such those uh, variables to such values so that the error error which is returned by the by the perceptron is uh, as low as possible. So basically, we need some function which gives uh, values from 0 to 1. We wanted to have a randomized function. Here we have a seed, and then we return our linear congruential generator, which gives us uh, subsequent pseudo numbers. Mm, then we wanted to define our own multiplication. We, have, uh, we can multiply arrays in another language. But we want to have some other form of multiplication, so here it is. So this is kind of element by element multiplication. So those are the input values. We have four here. We have four out of eight possible values, and then expected uh, outcome of the which should give us the, the neural network. And as you can see, the output is the is the middle value, and the left and right column should be discarded. So. Um, so then we begin with some random values. We, um, for all input values, as th those are oper operations on all elements of an array, we get some output, which is the S. Then we use something, and then we have output of our network. But we want to improve it, so we use something like called, uh, in the back propagation, this is gradient descent method. Here we have the sigmoid. Is the, it's derivative, so we, we want to move towards minimum of the of the function. So we uh, calculate the error, then do some multiplications and uh, correct the uh, the the, um, the coefficients of the of the network. So all those. Uh, uh, all those uh, operations or matrix are done in some convenient way. You, you needn't to write how to multiply some matrices. Everything is executed by the virtual machine. So matrices are first class. And in some many learning cycles, we repeat the forward-backward propagation to have those coefficients low. And here are the results. Those, bold, uh, those values are in bold. Mm -hmm are the input values which the network has never ever seen. But it gives us proper results, except for one value which it's, where it's undecided. Instead of saying that it should be 0, it gives us 50, value 50, which is, well, kind of un, un, 
unexpected value or some undecided value. So that was the, 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 the longer example. And uh, in the future, I want to um, extend on types, on some, do, add some operations on lists, use some externals, and uh, improve uh, runtime. Actually, records and list comprehension and foreign fun function interface have been added since I wrote this uh, presentation. So, yeah, I think that I will now focus on some type in inference. I think this is what Lua people want to do. And basically, that's, that's it. <coughs> so, to summarize, creating programming languages is a fun, can teach you a lot, although it, it comes at the, at the price. And I think at the, at the end is satisfactory to see something that it's running and that it's being executed as you expected. So, so thank you very much for your attention and for invitation. And if you want to uh, check the, the language, you can visit the website. And of course, I like to, if someone stars me on the GitHub. So, so thank you a lot for your time. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, and if I have time, then, uh, then I have T-shirts for the best uh, questions, <laughs> for the for six best questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, a question. A question. No, no, it's, it's by reference, so it, you, you, you get only kind of a pointer or a reference. So only a reference is passed to, to that value. If you have an array, it's, it's still in the memory. It's, it's not being copied. Yeah, all right, but all values are in memory. No, you can modify them by the ass assignments. So if, if you have an, uh, a reference to a variable or index at an array, then you can modify it with assignment. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, why did you choose to both have loops, like in C or uh -huh. other imperative languages, but also have tail color notation? Yeah. Well, I think that it's, it's your choice if you prefer to do this this way. From some academic point of view, or if you would like to learn how uh, tail recursion works, or if you would like to try to, to write your function in the tail recursive way, then here you go, you can, you can try this. And if you are, and loops are syntactic sugar over tail recursion, so you can do tail uh, um, loops instead. Uh, and another question? So, uh, errors is per citizens, right? Operations on errors, right? Yes. No, not, not yet, not yet, but uh, this, uh, I thought that using foreign function interface, I could use some, uh, some libraries to, to do such optimizations, but it's not ready yet. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes? It's uh, 25,000 lines of code right now. Uh, 25,000. Yeah, yeah, it's virtual machine, type checker, and uh, scanner parser. Okay, yeah, thank you. So, uh, yeah, okay, thank you.